Alrighty, so I figured it out. This is my favorite color for the Super Duty. And if you don't remember, I ordered a platinum in this color that I never got. I borrowed this truck from Larry H. Miller Super Ford here in Salt Lake City. I'm not sure if it's available. Let's go ahead and check out the window sticker so you guys can see some of the options. And then later on in this video, I'll show you guys the payload. At the very top is the description. And you guys see the colors. Baja cloth. I don't think I've ever done a video for the XLT with that interior color. Short listing of the standard equipment. And here are all the options. So that sport appearance is the same price as last year, just as an FYI. XLT premium package is $41.50. Pro Power onboard was $9.85. And a few of the things down below, be sure to pause it. Destination comes in at $19.95 with a total price of $68,195. Now, if you haven't been paying attention, the XLT got a $1,505 price increase. And there's no reason why. It's just new model year, new price. That being said, Getting the XLT means you get a lot of nice features as you guys saw. The way that this one is spec is perfect. If you want a truck that can tow a 10, 12, 13,000 pound trailer easily, this is how you would spec it out here. And when you get that sport package, it does paint the front bumpers. It gives you the LED headlights. Actually, really quickly, let's stop really quick. I wanna show you some of the lighting around the truck and then we'll jump back into the video. So here are the headlights, the low beam and full LED turn signals. And of course these fog lights are also gonna be projector LED. And I never really show this light here, but these do come on individually on both sides. And then you have your accent lights with the turn signal right there. And they're using incandescent turn signals, brake lights, and then LED reverse lights. And you guys can see there, incandescent license plate lights. Lastly, your center high mount is gonna be full LED too. Now I know a lot of people say they don't like this grill, but I like this grill. It's simple and it's easy to clean. I can already see that from what I have now, which is hard. Now, on the front end, you guys see the camera. So it's gonna have 360 camera view. You have the black recovery hooks down below, large balance down below. I would probably trade it off for a trimmer just because I don't like the way this looks. And it's a big truck. I don't really care about fuel economy either. Now, there is no active grill shutters on this truck. I'm not sure why Ford doesn't add that. I know GM does it on most of their trim levels, but on Fords, you don't normally see the active grill shutters, but they have that Super Duty stamped in the hood. And that anti-matter is beautiful. This is the best color for this truck, 100%. And if I do ever order another Ford truck, I'm ordering that truck in anti-matter again, for sure. But with this color and the black wheels, it's just the perfect look, guys. I think it's like absolutely cold-blooded, for sure. But 18 inch wheel wrapped in a Bridgestone Dueler AT tire and it's going to be an LT 275-70-18 and here is the capacity it's going to be 3,640 pounds at 80 psi which is pretty typical and you guys have that locking hub here solid front axle now you guys see here this has a fabric material for the wheel wall liner Sometimes it's plastic, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's something else. I, I don't know, like, it's like they're just kind of throwing on whatever they want because I've seen limiteds with plastic, but then on a slower trim, they have the fabric material. And this is better for cleaning and obviously for sound. So when rocks get kicked up, you don't really hear them as much. The trimming on the side is all blacked out here. And then you have plastic mirror caps up top. On the layer, they give you a black trim piece. You have those lights that you guys saw, fixed running boards down below. And this truck looks so good. Like, honestly, for a lower trim truck under 70 grand, that ain't bad. On the mirrors, you have blind spot. And these are heated on the top and not on the bottom. And these are manually operated. Camera. Painted door handles with smart key. You guys see the keypad. And remember, this is an XLT, right? Interesting. And you have those side steps on the bed. I like the fact that when you wash these out, the mud can flow out on the sides. On mine, you have to wash it out one way and it just splashes everywhere. So I like the way that Ford designed this. 34 gallon fuel tank with a standard bed. And then here is your leaf pack. You have four leaves in the main, overload, and then you have your bump stops here. I can tell the truck doesn't have fifth wheel prep package and there's no wheel wheel liner out back. It is an option though, okay? Here's just a better look at that rear step. And then here is the rear of the tailgate class four receiving hitch and 
Does this truck have a 373 or a 430? I can't remember now. Not only is it a 373, it also has a locker too. So really nice. And you guys can see your Bridgestone Dueler tire. It's going to be on a Steely though. Okay. You have your seven and four pin down below. Light, camera, action. Assisted tailgate, it doesn't have that step built in, which I prefer. This is still kind of heavy, actually. I've always thought that it would be a little bit lighter without the step, but it's about the same, actually. You have your tie downs, bed lights, camera above for your bed view, and 2000 watts of power was an option. And you can turn it on from back here, too. 220 amp plugs. Let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain on this truck. But one last look on the side here. See that sport badge? Looks really good. Is this the holy grail of HD gas engines? Depends on who you talk to. I personally like this engine the best because it does have black injection. Also, they're still using an iron block, aluminum heads. And this engine did get a bump for horsepower and torque for the redesign. So it's gonna have 430 horsepower, which comes on around 5,500 RPMs, which is typical, 55, 5,600 RPMs, which you normally see. And then 485 pound-feet of torque, which comes on around 4,000, which is pretty low, actually, when you consider a big V8 like this. Now, compression is 10 and a half to one. For this updated engine, they did do new piston rings and water pump for more efficiency. And yes, I think that it's probably one of the best engines on the market. And the 10 speed 10R140 transmission is behind it. And it's probably about the same as that same one behind the diesel. One major fail from Ford was the fact that they did not offer the 6.8 for the XLT. I thought that was silly. Now, I did a test comparing this powertrain to that 6.8 with the 10L100 transmission. And shockingly, I liked it better. I was very shocked by that. And they both had 373 axe ratios. By the way, this truck has rear parking sensors. I don't think I mentioned that. Now, here is that Baja interior. I love tan and I love blue. And when you put these two things together, I love it. Listen, if I ever decide I want to save more money in the future on a truck, I would build it just like this. The only thing is you can't get that panel sunroof, so I would have to go up to Lariat. But be that as it may, you still have power seats and lumbar, but the seat back recline is gonna be manually operated. You still have a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Oh, by the way, B&O sound system. And I love the tan on the black too. Really nice colors there. Also, you still have power phoning outside mirrors. You still have tow mode as well. No seat memories though, but that's okay. This is a XLT, so this is basically a work truck, right? Auto up and down for the front windows. When people complain about pricing, I will say, if you go back 15 years, you didn't have half the stuff that this truck has. I mean, having LED headlights was was laughable. And even with this having blind spot monitoring, there's just a lot of nice features. This has like adaptive cruise control. I mean, there's just so many things that come standard. But here's some of the buttons on the side here. This is for the pro power. You can drop the tailgate from inside. You can't put it back up from inside though. And here's some of your lighting, electronic parking brake, and then you have that black carpet, which looks perfect with this interior. And you know, I like this better than the slate for sure. It looks a little bit better. I'm sold. Now you still have the vinyl steering wheel, so it's not leather wrapped, but you have the push button start, which wasn't even available on 2022 Super Duties for XLT. Sorry about that, the keys fell out of my pocket, but you guys can see remote start and it has the smart key. So electronic locker, and then let's go over the drive modes really quickly. So you have eco, tow haul, normal, slippery off-road and that's it ford is the only manufacturer that gives you an eco mode for their trucks you cannot get the heads up display on this one but you have the 12 inch display and you guys see you have the 12 inch screen here now you know what i'm about to show you next it's my favorite thing about these trucks is gauges love the fact that they give this to you for the gas engine too so all your temperatures are in one spot also if you want you have auxiliary gauges here and let me show you guys something else. I'm gonna go into tow haul mode for a second and I'm gonna show you guys something that you can do right here. If you go into settings and you go into configure tow view, you can pretty much 
add what you want to see inside of here, which I love. So if you want to put your measurements inside of here, you can do that. Also, you can configure the gauges at the very top too, so you can swap them around. You guys see that, how they're switching around up there? You can do that, and you can actually change what you see too. So you can put a temperature for the engine oil up there, although I don't mind the oil pressure personally. Not a bad deal. And then of course you can change the right one. Also, you can add a detailed temperature up top. Now the reason why you would want to swap around those gauges, let me show you why you would want to do that. So if you want to swap them, that way you can have the temperatures next to each other. But yeah, check out how you have your measurements. You have the RPMs at the very top and you have the speed all in one spot here. I mean, that's just super nice. And if you want to have your trip and fuel right here, you can do that too. This really done well by Ford. I really appreciate them giving you this type of setup. They have the best so far. I used to rave about Ram, and now I have to rave about the Ford because they just have a better setup there. There is no dual climate control. You still have heated seats, two USBs, and no wireless charger for your phone. You can add more cup holders, and then check out your center console here. This is done really well, like the two-tone. And then this is lockable. This tray can be removed. There's two type C USBs, and it is illuminated. And most people will take this See there? And then this third on that side. You have your 12 volt, 120 volt plugs there, traction control. As I said, on the outside, you have 360 camera view. And then there's a trailer brake. Yeah, I definitely think this is a really nice truck. I, I'm kind of happy it doesn't have that pro trailer backup assistance, too. I don't think I would ever want that. I think that's something they should get rid of. But again, maybe some people use it. I don't know. You guys see this, too? When you get the Baja interior, they give you the black headliner. That's why this truck is so perfect. I love the fact that they do that. Sorry, my camera got a little hot there, but here are the vanities up top. You do have a spot here for your sunglasses. You have a power sliding rear glass. And on this side, if you get the XL and the STX, I don't think they give you a vanity on this side. And if they do, they don't give you the cover for it. But let's go ahead and check this out here because this truck has something that you guys probably didn't notice on the window sticker and I want to explain it really quickly. Now I'm not sure if you guys noticed the camper package on here for $160. It gives it the heavy service front suspension and a jack. Now in the past when I've done videos you guys will see you can't use certain trucks to carry a camper inside the bed. Okay. That being said when you have that camper package you see right here you have the certification to do so. That's what this paper is for. I'm gonna do a separate video on this because there's a few of the things that comes on this package and it's a lot to look at because not every trim level can get the camper package. They kind of name it something different. So just keep that in mind, but be sure to pause it. If you wanna see more of this, I'll just kind of make sure you guys can see starting at the top here, uh, just everything so you can read it later. And like I said, maybe if this truck doesn't sell, within the week, I will come back and show this to you. But yeah, this is good information here for anyone that's looking to build this truck because I haven't seen many trucks come with this because not a lot of people buy campers like that. So that's what that's for. And like I said, hopefully this truck doesn't sell so I can show you guys the differences. But here is the rear 6040 bench. This one does not have the storage below the seat as you guys can see, but air vents, you have two Type-C USBs, 120 volt, 12 volt seat back pockets. Let's go ahead and check out the payload. So here is the front gross axle rating, which is upgraded because of that camper package, the 5,200 pounds. I believe it's like 48 or 44, somewhere in there. And then the rear is gonna be 7,230. Gross fuel equipment rating is gonna be 11,499. And three E is the axle code for the 373 locker. And where are the wheels? 18 by 8 wide wheels. All in payload capacity is holy smokes. Whoa. 4,345 pounds. That is insane. And if this was a long bed, it would be closer to like probably like 4,600 pounds because they do increase the GVWR by 400 pounds. Although you do get a 48 gallon fuel tank, so that's going to lower it a little bit. That's huge payload. I mean, you're probably able to tow a not big triple axle toy hauler, but pretty close to it. I mean, I would say as long as the hitch weight is dry around like 3,000 pounds, you should have more than enough capacity once you had your passengers and your hitch and everything. But I hope you guys liked the video. This is a really beautiful truck. 
it shows as a special order so it could be sold so i'm not going to drive the truck obviously so if they get more in i will be doing some more driving videos so be sure to subscribe to the channel make sure your bell notification on see you guys soon Thank you.